welcome. Thanks for joining us for the nonprofit show. We are so glad that you're here, either joining us live or watching or listening to one of our recordings. If you joined us for the green room chatter, you probably think that RJ and I are family and we're pretty darn near close. <laughs> RJ Caswell joins us from Infinite Giving. He's been on before, so he's not a new face, but he is one of our favorites. Today, he's going to talk to us about managing nonprofit reserves. So before we dive into that conversation, we, of course, want you to know who you're looking at or listening to, Julia Patrick, CEO. She created this wonderful opportunity called The Nonprofit Show. She's CEO of the American Nonprofit and is enjoying a day off. So good for you, <laughs> Julia Self-care is important. I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd, CEO of The Raven Group, honored to serve alongside each and every day as the co-host of the show. And again, we are honored to have the sponsors, Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy, Nonprofit Nerd, your part-time controller, the Nonprofit Atlas, Nonprofit Thought Leader, and Staffing Boutique. These companies truly keep us going and growing, but not just us here at the show and the nonprofit show, each and every one of you, because they exist to help you move the needle on your mission forward, however that looks for you and in your community. So please do check them out. They're amazing companies, amazing supporters, and they are on your team. Believe it or not, we are marching towards 600 episodes. And in our green room chatter, RJ said, can't believe you do this each and every day. And I said, <laughs> Me either. Like, can you believe? <laughs> but it really is nice. So if you missed any episode or you want to go back and, and repeat or you're tired of, of binge watching Netflix, you can binge watch us on Roku, YouTube, Fire TV, as well as Vimeo. And if you're a podcast listener like myself, you can also queue us up on uh, anywhere you stream your podcast. We just go ahead and queue up the nonprofit show. Well, RJ, thanks for sitting and waiting so patiently as we jump into this conversation. I first want to say welcome back. Oh, it's a blast. Uh, it was a privilege to be invited back. You never know. After one time, you know, what happens? You get invited back. Maybe it's a sign that it went okay. It went okay. The first date was good and we're going to have more of those, but definitely, you know, first impression was phenomenal. You joined us previously with Karen, who uh, is the founder of Infinite Giving. I got the pleasure of seeing both of you and many more of your team members at the AFP Icon Conference. Um, but since that conference, RJ, there's been a little bit of news about Infinite Giving. Tell us, yeah. toot your horn, shoot from the rooftops, yeah. You were named, was it World Changing Idea for 2022? Talk to us about that recognition. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Actually, we found out that Fast Company was going to recognize us as a World Changing Idea for 2022 in, in the software category, which uh, most of you probably know Fast Company. It's a pretty recognizable name and a, and a high honor. We found out that uh, we were getting recognized as a finalist. Uh, during the conference, we couldn't say anything. Uh, because they hadn't released it yet. So we had to we had to wait for them to release it, which happened right at the end of the conference. So we we're able to celebrate right after AFP Icon, uh, which is just um, a, a true testament, I think, honestly, to Karen and the idea she had to, to found this company to, to serve nonprofits in a way uh, that wasn't being done before, in, in a way that can be done really well and transparent, all those things. Uh, but it sure is an honor to be to be named by Fast Company. Fantastic honor, because when was Infinite Giving founded? When did Karen start? Oh, about 14 months ago. Whew. Well, amazing. That, yeah. That's truly amazing. So uh, RJ is going to nerd out with me. We're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, but again, as the slide shows here and those of you listening, Infinite Giving, uh, RJ is Director of Business Development. So infinitegiving.com. You can find, learn, find more about Infinite Giving as well as RJ. So we're going to talk about truly, you know, investments, what, what's going on with our money and our nonprofits, RJ, we don't have a lot of time. Uh, so 30 minutes is really just scratching the surface. And I best confessed up to you, this is not my wheelhouse. Like this is Greek to me. So go easy, lay it on us. Like, you know, like you would a kindergartner, <laughs> maybe a fifth grader, right? But really help us understand. And let's jump off the, the springboard here. Operating cash and your nonprofit reserves. Educate us on this. What, what exactly? Sure. sure. Well, let's, let's, let, let's kind of start at the beginning, operating cash and, and what that actually means. So operating cash is, is 
the cash a nonprofit needs to actually run the organization day to day. So you, you do that budget process and you start living out that budget. Now there's pieces in there, right? You, you need to have money in the bank before the budget money comes, unless you're a startup. And so I empathize with all those nonprofit startups around the country. And I've met with actually a number of them in the last couple of months. And I've helped start a lot of nonprofits, right? You, you start from zero. And so you start spending money as soon as it comes in. But once you get up and running and you have your budget, you need to have enough cash in your checking account, your nonprofit checking account, to be able to handle all the normal expenses that come with running a nonprofit. And for me, that would be like my checking account, my personal checking account, uh, what it just takes to, to run a household with four teenagers and my wife and I, and what, what happens on a day-to-day -day basis. It's where our paycheck gets direct deposited to, and that's the operating cash, just kind of those day-to-day -day expenses. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So you have pretty large grocery bill if you have that many teenagers yeah. in the home. <laughs> and with inflation, it, you, you put you put a little bit more in that budget now. That's right. You've got, you know, car, transportation, whatever that looks like. Again, looking at inflation, which mm -hmm. is interesting, right? And so let curveball here. Let's yeah. talk about inflation and how that might be impacting how we consider our operating cash and our reserves. What are you seeing by way of this right now? Well, I mean, I think it, it's impacting everybody, right? It's impacting our personal households. I mean, when we look at our, our grocery budget and our gas budget, just alone, those two items, um, when you're up, you know, six, seven right now, overall inflation is what, 8.2%. I might be off a little bit over 8% still and it. It's been holding that way for a couple months. Um, that just means our purchasing power is that much less. And so grocery store gas station is where I personally feel it the most. So nonprofits are feeling that as well in purchasing whatever it takes in their normal day-to-day -day life as an organization, their purchasing power just decreased. And so uh, the, the, probably the pressure on development teams to make sure that everything's coming in when they hope it would come in, your operating cash is, is at a sufficient level to handle those fluctuations. Yeah. And you mentioned that operating cash is really everything it takes to run your organization. Mm -hmm. Many organizations uh, work on the, you know, the fiscal calendar, or sorry, the fiscal year end, yeah. June, July. And so I'm sure this operating conversation, programmatic conversation is happening right now. So this is very relevant, very timely. Mm -hmm. What do we need? How do we, you know, um, incorporate current trends and, and what's happening in our world as we continue to navigate not to mention something I, I kind of plugged in your ear earlier that I wanted to ask about mm. is how political campaigns might also impact kind of our overall uh, finances, our budget. And again, not to get political, but I know yeah. every single time there is a presidential campaign, it really shifts the philanthropy uh, landscape. And so I'm sure we need to start, you know, it's it's not a campaign year, but it is a campaigning year, right? Like right. it starts so early. I already want to say, stop, stop with the messages, yeah. but, but they're coming. So I'm sure that impacts, you know, our, um, our operating and, and reserves as well. But the next thing you want to talk to us about truly is the investment best practices. So what exactly does this include RJ? Sure. Sure. So if we come, I kind of come back to that example of just our personal checking account, uh, but the next part of that would be our savings account. Uh, and hopefully most of us have savings account that that are, are needed. They're not day to day expenses, but they're those yearly expenses that come up. Uh, maybe my washing machine went out and I need to pull from savings really quickly to go because we're going to have to have a washing machine in my house. We could probably do the laundromat we have in the past for a short season, uh, but we want to get that filled. Uh, the car. Um, we had a transmission go out last year in our car and, you know, three grand out the door. We needed to pull that from savings. That wasn't in our normal checking account ready to go as a normal expense. So for a nonprofit, I'd say the same thing. You really want your reserve start there with kind of your savings account. And that's probably 30 to 60 days of cash operational reserves that are in maybe maybe a savings account, maybe a money market account something you have quick access to as a nonprofit. So when something comes up, it could be cash flow just for payroll because 
uh, large donation didn't come on time. You and I talked before, you know, if you're trying to calendar year out from a budget, you typically also your finance folks are going to want you to kind of do a monthly spend. Where are those big months where there's more spend and less spend and where is more donations come? December is usually a really high donation month. So how do you make that spread out across the year? All those things that are not my expertise, but I've been a part of for a long time, all factor into that. So that 30 to 60 days of operational reserves, that would be kind of be your first. And, that, you know, money market isn't in, in it, I would still say it's an investment because you're getting a return. It's low return, uh, but you have quick access to it. So I'm surprised you said 30 to 60. I would have thought that we probably need much more than that. Well, I think the next step is yes, the next step. So 30 to 60 days where you have really, really quick access to it. Probably okay. after that 60 days, you want to start building a longer term reserve fund. And that's where I think the investments really come into play. Uh, where you could build, I would say eight, nine years ago, it seemed to be rule of thumb. You wanted three to six months of reserves as a nonprofit. Again, 30 to 60 days, some more quick access after that. The, all the nonprofits I've met with in the last year, and it might be because of COVID giving was, was a surprise and they have cash for the first time. I sit on a board of a nonprofit here in Charlotte and they actually got a huge grant from the city of Charlotte from their COVID fund unexpected. It wasn't in our budget. And our board quickly decided with our executive director to say, hey, that's the start of a reserve fund. And it actually ended up being like eight months of operating cash that we could set aside. So it seems to be the nonprofits we talk about now, after they have that 30, 60 days, are really putting away sometimes six, nine, even 12 months. I talked to two nonprofits in the last probably six weeks that both have 12 months wow. um, of reserves. Now, right, everybody's on a continuum everybody, every nonprofit is in a different situation, but I think the principles are the same, being able to plan. And the reason I think investments come in, and you and I talked about it, is you have your checking account, you have your savings or money market account, and then you have your 401k or your 403b, if you're a person. For me, that's a 403b, um, got a couple different ones and put them in our IRA, but that's all invested in the market. And uh, yes, stepping in the market is risky, but we also know for me to retire, I'm going to have to be in the market to realize long-term gains over time. The market's in a tough spot right now, but we know history proves out that over time, right. that's going to go up. Right. And for a nonprofit, I would say the same principle. Those six, nine, 12 months, you want to get them in where they can work for you because you're not touching them right now. Mm -hmm. uh, at Infinity Giving, we would say you want to put that money, um, invest the, the funds that you're not going to need in the next year. That's why we think that 30 to 60 days, you probably want quick access to. Right. It really Anything, needs to be more liquid, accessible. Exactly. Now, depending on who you use, maybe a plug for Infinity Giving, maybe not. Uh, you still can, depending on who you use to invest, can have access to those funds. Mm -hmm. um, some places that's more cumbersome than others. Uh, part of the reason we exist is to make that easier uh, because we're using technology, right? Uh, but it's still not the same as literally instantaneous with a savings account to a checking account. I mean, that would happen that day. Um, with us, it would still take a couple days. But anything over a year, let's let that grow just like you would your 403B. I love that. And I love, congratulations, mm -hmm. you know, first of all, thank you for serving mm -hmm. your community and being on a board. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then congratulations to the organization for, for not only receiving that money, but acknowledging, hey, this is our first little bit of yeah. reserve that we're going to put away and it's going to help us grow. So RJ, I mentioned, and I kind of I kind of went blue by it, but the political campaign yep. and, and how that might impact our future. Um, any thoughts on that as we move forward in the next, you know, two to three years, how that like pull out that crystal ball. I know you yeah. have to shine it up and, and, and tell us like, what can we prepare for? That is, it's a great question. Um, I think it's an incredibly difficult question. Um, yeah. And I'm sure somebody much smarter than me can actually start looking at data. Um, so I know there's tons of data nerds out there and pulling donor information over seasons during um, kind of the, the, especially presidential elections, but any elections, kind of what that does. And which which party is coming out on top or not probably influences that data as well. But I would say, 
At a bare minimum, yes, we're going to see an impact depending on what sector you're in as a nonprofit, right? Um, what service you provide. Those, I think, all factor into those debates as well as law. I mean, every, yes. I, mean, I think every season we hear more about this tax deduction and will it stay? Will it, will it shift? Will it change? Right. For donors, Will that change? Will the standard deduction stay? Will it will it go up? Will it go down? I mean, we saw that shift a couple of years ago politically as well, when some donors were making one large gift that was really a two-year gift for the making in one year because of taxes. So I think that tax implication for the donor, not that I'm a crystal ball, what how that shapes out politically, I think really does impact nonprofits, especially on their budgets. And and those bless their heart, those advancement and development folks who are in it every day trying to navigate that world on the donors. I knew you could fit in a bless your heart. I just knew it. <laughs> it's ingrained. I can't even stop it. I, I know. No, it's fantastic. Well, thank you for, for riffing off that. You know, I, I know neither of us are really the experts when it comes to political or presidential campaigns. But, you know, infinite giving is fantastic, really, with the invest in, investment. You talked about best practices. What are other options we might consider and, and really sink our teeth into when it comes to other options for investing? Is there anything else we really need to, like, have our finger on the pulse, RJ? Sure. I mean, a couple other options. I think, again, trying to get a good base, whether it's individually and in your personal finances, having that big, strong foundation. The same, I think, is true. For, for a nonprofit, um, having really skilled um, executive directors and finance folks and board members to know what is the foundation we want to lay? What is the operating reserves? What are the capital reserves? Not every nonprofit needs capital reserves, but some will need to look at capital reserves if they have capital needs, buildings, facilities, um, cars, trucks. Um, that's, that's separate than operational reserves. So I think capital reserves are another um, thing that not every nonprofit would need to look at, but some will definitely need to look at a capital reserve fund that would most likely be invested because you're going to have a schedule of replacements that goes out sometimes five to seven years for roofs and parking lots and HVAC units. And so you actually, it, it would be wise to look at it potentially investing capital reserves because you're not going to draw on them all the time. Your fleet, if that's something, fleet yeah. of vehicles, right? You yep. mentioned your own personal transmission. Uh, technology, yep. that has been a big one. Big one. And it's not going away. That's going to be increasing, right? That's going to be increasing. I, I just talked to an IT consultant the other day for, for an organization, and he came back with a $400,000 quote. Now, he did give us the caveat that is not yeah. the nonprofit rate. So he really just went out to the market took a look at technology, the, yeah. the you know, advancements that this organization needs. And he said, here, here it is. And I was like, whoa, let's right. lift my jaw, my yeah. jaw up, you know, but that's, that's ever changing. Um, so this is very valuable. And I appreciate you bringing this down to a kindergartner, fifth grade level for, for me to understand. That's what I need too. That's what I need. <laughs> well, hey, you're, you're doing a great job. Who should be having these conversations at the organization? Like, who do we need at the table? So, a uh, great question. We actually talked a lot about this uh, in the Infinite Giving team at AFP Icon for folks who were coming by our table. And um, it was really interesting when we were talking um, really about uh, kind of our tools for stock donations, crypto donations, and endowments. And endowments is another one. You said other investment options after you have a good foundation. I put a plug in after you have you know, operating cash set aside, your savings account set aside and your reserve account set aside, great things open up, right? For potential for endowments and uh, other things like that, uh, that I think get really exciting again for legacy and for the longevity of an organization. Yeah. So endowments, but we were talking about people who came by the booth. Uh, but again, it was a fundraising, right? So most were fundraising professionals. So anytime we were talking reserves, it was, oh, you, I need to pass this on to my CFO, my finance director. Uh, and sure enough, I followed up with a lot of people who asked to be followed up with at AFP and sent them some more information. And it was, this is awesome. I got to get it to my CFO. Yeah. And so I think you kind of have this split for, for folks that need to be in the room. You have kind of, I think, donor development uh, leaders 
need to be in the room. You have, of course, your executive director and then your key finance people. And those are sometimes two different worlds, but I think they're really, really important to talk together because if they're not on the same page, it can be really tough for the organization to advance their mission. Mm -hmm. Great point, because we talk often about those silos, you know, where it's program, it's development, it's finance, you don't really mingle and, you know, um, exchange information as regularly as maybe it needs to be done. What about a finance committee as part of the board? Is that something that Infinite Giving is, is, you know, really discussing with? Is this finance committee or an investment committee task force? Like, where on that board governance level should should we include? So anytime I think when, when you're talking about investing money, it's going to go to the board, right? I would yes. say, again, depending on the size of your organization, most medium-sized nonprofits, even some on the small size, are going to have some sort of finance subcommittee that are helping already look at the reports. So I think it would start there going, what do we want? How do we approach this? And then that finance committee, which we work with, we work with a lot of finance committees, uh, was meeting with one last week, um, whether they want an actual investment policy, they just want to make sure everything's in line. And then it typically, of course, would go to the board and the executive director to go, let's move forward, let's, let's invest, and okay. let's, let's, let's do this. But I do think that those, those finance folks that often can get a bad rap, right, uh, are so critical to um, grounding the organization, setting a foundation to really let everybody else run really hard at the mission. So another question is, how long is this process? Like if we were to say, okay, RJ, we're drinking your Kool-Aid. We know we need some help. Um, you said, bless your heart. So we're all done. Um, what's the process look like? What's the timeline? So, uh, so the actual timeline to set up an investment account with us, and again, we're using technology, so it, it's quicker than historically has happened. We can get you set up in 15 minutes. Wow. Okay. So set the account, and then it would take a couple of days for the account to be opened, and then the money would be invested. So all told, what, th- three, four days. Now, that's the easy part. Right. So <laughs> the work is before that moment in time, and that's getting everybody on the same page. And, and that literally can, I've, I had one customer that took a month. I had one customer that took three months. And then I have other um, nonprofits I'm working with now that um, it's already been four months and I feel really confident we'll get there, but it might be four more months. It's really at the pace of what's your board meeting cycle. Um, what's the margin for folks in their day to day to look at this. Um, so h- how long it takes to get to that moment. Yeah. is really, really varied. But we can say confidently, once you get to that moment, we can do it really quickly, mm-hmm. really efficiently, and really leverage technology to make it a really good process for you to actually get invested. I've noticed, you know, I started my business 2009. Mm-hmm. I've noticed this hurry up and wait mentality in the nonprofit <laughs> sector. So, you know, the organization knows it's a great opportunity. They know they need to take action. They're not always as agile, as nimble mm. as others would like them to be. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really often that hurry up and wait, but it, it takes whatever time, as you said, you know, the organization needs to take, do their due diligence, best practice. I always say, you know, talk to a couple of different companies, yep. make sure you're getting the information. Um, but if you're looking for good people, great characters, integrity, respect, trust, definitely Infinite Giving is your team. RJ Caswell, again, thank you for joining us, getting super nerdy. I still need to get you some tape to put on those glasses right there. That's, that's um, right. Just so glad you can join us. Um, how, how do we go about contacting Infinite Giving? Is it you that we need to speak to? Do we go through the website? Talk to us about how we can contact the company. It, any of those ways, you can jump on the website, fill out a form, we'll get in contact with you. My email is rj at infinitegiving.com. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn, um, send me a, a DM, send a connection request. We'd love to connect with you there as well. We make it as easy as possible. Yeah. Shout out to your LinkedIn, man. You've got like really good posts. And I was, oh, gonna, I was gonna um message you and say, who who does your posts? Like do you get prompts each and every day or are they just coming from you naturally? 
I would love to think there was some rhyme or reason. They, they, that's just something I've, I've got a note app on my phone. I have an iPhone and it's a note app. And I've just been kind of collecting themes and personal experiences and jot them down. And in the morning, um, for me, it's been honestly a, um, just a good rhythm. I not, have not historically been a writer. And this has just been great for me personally. So if anybody else benefits, that's awesome. I'd love to serve. Uh, but it's been a great exercise for me. So I just open up my note app and look through themes and ideas and, and, um, and write. Well, they're very authentic and they definitely resonate with me. So I love, I love what you're putting out there. Definitely uh, for everyone else, check out RJ on LinkedIn, very active and uh, the rest of the team too. So Thank you so much. And thank you to Julia Patrick that created the nonprofit show and allows me to have fun and play with guests like RJ. It's really good. And we can connect and and have some friendly banter. I'm honored to be here. And we are so honored to have the continued support from our presenting sponsors. Those of you watching, you can see them on the screen. But those of you listening to our podcast version, I'd like to give a shout out to Bloomerang American Nonprofit Academy. Fundraising Academy, Nonprofit Nerd, Your Part-Time Controller, The Nonprofit Atlas, Nonprofit Thought Leader, as well as Staffing Boutique. Now is a great time to check out these companies. They are fantastic. They are on your team, in your community, helping to drive your mission forward. So RJ, again, thank you for bringing this down to a level that I could understand and sharing your, your valuable time and expertise with all of our guests. I couldn't be more more privileged to be here. Thanks so much, Jared. Absolutely. And, and congrats to the entire team uh, for this recognition mm. with Fast Company. Just really thrilled to see the growth of this company. And again, really, really good people. So thanks to everyone who joined us, either live or the recording version. We are honored to have you here for the nonprofit show. We hope you'll join us tomorrow. And until then, we always ask you to please stay well so you can continue to do well. Thank you.